It's been a busy week for the American internationals in Europe. Very competitive, players getting their opportunity to play on the European stage, but also domestically, trying to make sure they continue to push themselves up their own domestic tables, but also fight for the potential to be in Greg Berhalter's side when it comes into these next round of qualifiers coming up in November. Welcome! into our CBS Sports HQ studios. I'm your host, Ian Joy, today. Joining me is Jimmy Conrad and Lucho Garcia. We're having a look at some of the Americans abroad, and there's been many a story this weekend. Jimmy Conrad, I know you've had your eye on a couple. Tell me all about it. Okay, Ian, I am going to go with two of the biggest derbies, in my humble opinion, this past weekend. I'm going to start with Inter Milan hosting Juventus. This is... One of the biggest matchups, one of the most historical matchups in Serie A, which you can watch here on Paramount+. Plus. And I'm going to talk about Weston McKinney. The man got the start for Mauricio Allegri, excuse me, Maximo Allegri in this one. And I really loved his game in this particular, he was, he was breaking up plays, he was getting forward. And what I really love about Weston is his ability to want to get forward. Sometimes you can see with younger players in particular, they want to play safe, they want to play conservatively. Weston McKinney does not have that in his dictionary. Not only that, he added these super long throw-ins. They're actually pretty dangerous for Juventus throughout. It ended up as a 1-1 draw. If you didn't see it, a bit of a controversial penalty there at the end. Kind of soft, in my humble opinion. Weston didn't have anything to do with that. But I thought he was good. I thought he was solid. And most importantly, he's got a top world-class manager who trusts him in the biggest game of the season. And that speaks a lot about Weston McKinney in particular. Now, the other player I wanted to talk about was Serginho Dest, who started in the messy spot for Barcelona in El Clasico at the new camp. What? I never thought I would ever say that in a million years about an American player, but here we are. Now, I do want to, if you haven't seen this game, I just want to add a caveat. He missed a sitter. But that's only because Serginho Dest scores bangers, everybody. He only likes top corner world-class goals. He doesn't like the simple tap-ins. That's what I'm trying to rationalize in my own head. I'm not sure exactly how he missed this one. I think it's harder to miss than to make, but fair play to him. He came back and had an assist later in the game to Sergio Aguero. He started off in that winger spot, like I mentioned. Ended up at halftime moving back to the wing-back spot from Ingueza. He looked a little bit more comfortable there. Could join the attack and not necessarily be the guy that has to make everything happen on that side of the field. So maybe we'll see how he plays for the U.S. moving forward. But two massive games for two American internationals. And if Des would have scored that, he would have been a hero for Barcelona forever. And I'm sure Lucho can talk about that. But he didn't, and he's got to live with that. But I think it's ultimately going to make him a better player. I'm quietly confident, Jimmy, that Lucho Garcia can tell you all about that miss because he had a front row seat <laughs> at the new camp for that game. Lucho Garcia, DeAndre Yedlin, played 90 minutes against Lokomotiv Moscow. Um, he's also got a big game today in the derby against Besiktas for Galatasaray. But Brendan Harrison is one talented youngster that has really caught your attention of late. Yes, Ian. 1-1 one, one is at the moment. Galatasaray is drawing away and uh, the, uh, Jelin is, is playing on the right side. And yeah, Brendan Aronson is... Listen, because he's a player who... Uh, I've seen him play in different positions. I play. I saw him play as a, as a, wing back, as a left uh, winger. Uh, and yeah, he's, he's happy there with the uh, with, um, US men national team uh, coach. He's trying to give him the chance over there and he's comfortable, but... I think that his best position is right there, where he plays at Salzburg. He is enjoying uh, his freedom. Uh, he's always getting in the, in, right, in the right areas. He's looking at, uh, forward to, to try to connect with the, the strikers he's got from. And I love the time that he's got. He's perfectly know when uh, the holding midfield that is waiting for him. He moves to the right, uh, to the right side, to the left side, and he gets those pockets. And for a player who is there, for a playmaker on a team like uh, like Salzburg, it's very important to the timing of when to arrive, not to be in there. And he's getting that in the perfect in the perfect way. That's why when he's on the ball, he's always dangerous. He's always trying to find that uh, perfect pass in between the lines, that perfect pass to the wide areas in arriving second line. I think he still needs to arrive a little bit more into the box. He was going to have a, a little bit more of opportunity to, to maybe get a shot or maybe a good strike. But at the end, it's about, it's not the player in charge of scoring all the goals. It's the, the player in charge of linking the midfield with the striker. And he's doing a great job. So fantastic the way he's playing at the moment, getting 90 minutes every single game he's playing the last week. So, yeah, it's a, a player we are, are going to have an eye on in the U.S. men national team. 
I love to hear the positivity from you both. Uh, I'm going to go to a bit more of a concerned route with my two players. I've got my eye on, of course, Josh Sargent. He made that big move from uh, Vera Bremen over to the Premier League to sign for Norwich City. It was about 10 million euros. Big price tag for an American. Not bad. Um, expectancy is pretty high when you get to the Premier League because you're expected to score goals in the big league, not just in the cup competitions domestically. Josh has struggled to really score goals in the Premier League. Again, so this weekend he did play. No goals for Norwich City they got absolutely humiliated by seven goals to nil against Chelsea and that is a concern for me what happens to him going forward obviously for the national team aspect as well where's his confidence at right now he's not necessarily a natural goal scorer he can score goals but as previously proven in the Bundesliga and now in the Premier League he's finding goals very hard to come by and I don't know if it's him individually or if it's team but what is a bigger concern for me and I'm going to turn to Jimmy Conrad in just a second is John Brooks after those performances that we witnessed in the first round of World Cup qualifiers and then heading back to the Bundesliga and also in the Champions League, I must add, where he was really, really poor. Against Salzburg, it was a lack of concentration. And what is more concerning to me, Jimmy Conrad, Wolfsburg have just fired their coach, Mark Van Bommel. He's now gone. So he, clearly things are not going well for Wolfsburg, regardless, domestically or in European competition. But he's not getting that desire going. I don't see real effort from John Brooks. It was proven so in the World Cup qualifiers. And the last couple of games that I have watched John Brooks play for Wolfsburg has been an even bigger concern for me. Lack of tracking back. And it looks like maybe in some way he sort of lost his love for the game. Or at least he's lost his desire to just track back and work for his team. That's really frustrating for me as a former defender. But Jimmy, i got to turn to you. I mean, is this concerning for Greg Berhalter as well when you've got really one big leader in your team in John Brooks, who is the guy you turn to, has worn the captain's armband a couple of times, not playing well, showing a lack of desire, not tracking back, and now domestically having problems at Wolfsburg? Well, on one hand, Ian, and this is a great setup. I, I do have a red flag about John Anthony Brooks as well. But on one hand, it gives other players an opportunity. We see Mark McKenzie come in. We see Miles Robinson come in and, and James Sands. I mean, we're getting a whole bunch of different players. Chris Richards getting a chance as well of, of Bayern Munich. And also he's on loan to Hoffenheim at the moment. So, so we're going to get to see some other players. And that's how I got my opportunity with the national team. And I'm sure for Lucho, it was very similar. Sometimes you need somebody to get hurt to get that, that chance. Now, on the other side, when I think about him, his form was starting to dip when he was playing in that first international window against Canada in particular, where he didn't track Kyle Lahren in the middle of the field. Like These little things that are necessary to be successful as a center back, and he wasn't doing them consistently, and we saw it there from our perspective, because a lot of us don't get to watch him week in and week out with Wolfsburg. And now that our eyes are turned on him, okay, is he healthy, is he going to play, is he not going to play, we're starting to pay attention a little bit more, and we're still seeing the same things. I don't know if he's distracted. I don't know if there's something going on behind the scenes or off the field that we're unaware of. But there's some lack of focus that's happening right now. I don't know what Greg Berhalter is talking to him. I assume that the national team manager would be nothing but positive to try to get back up to speed, especially on the mental side of it. But I don't know what the easy fix is other than just getting back to the basics and doing the little things perfect every single time. And once you start doing that, then you can start to add those other layers of maybe spraying the ball here or there, or dribbling into midfield to help out or whatever it may be. But he's got to lock down those other things first. Hey, Lucho, Lucho, I touched upon obviously Josh Sargent struggling in the Premier League. I mean, how difficult is it for a player to go from one league that you're so used to for you, it was Liga, then moving all the way over to the Premier League. How difficult is it for Josh Sargent right now when he's going through a period, not scoring goals, they're bottom of the table, that must be incredibly hard mentally also. Very, very hard, Ian. And you are not mentioning that, that they are strikers at the, at the national team, that they are doing well. And that's something that they know. He's a very young uh, player and it's difficult to handle this kind of situation. You go to a very difficult competition. Defenders are not going to allow you just one second to, to turn. They're not going to allow you to receive the ball in a, in, a, in a comfortable zone. And then you go in the other side. Ricardo Pepe scoring goals, doing well. Brendan Anderson is uh, doing great. So at the end, that's something that you have an eye on always because you want to be in, the, in your national team. You want to do well for your team, but always you have the, the, that mentality, that uh, goal of, yeah, I'm going to try to do my best because I want to be with, <clears throat> excuse me, with my national team. And at the moment, he's struggling because of that. He's a striker. The strikers are there to score goals. When you're not scoring goals, you know there is something that you are not doing well. And then you have a, a, an eye on the other side. And see that happening 
is even more pressure. So not, not easy for him uh, to, to manage that, I'm sure of that. So we need to give him time. I think there is someone has to talk around him uh, to, to try to uh, uh, tell him, yeah, you're not doing maybe what you have to do at the moment, but you have to continue or you have to continue trying because if you give up at the moment, you're not going to have a chance maybe in the future. Boys, thank you very much, as always, for joining us this week. And thanks to everyone out there who's been watching along, who's been leaving comments, who's been sharing the love, and obviously following Jimmy Conrad on social media because I see his follow numbers going up and up. Before we go, we want to just salute Carly <laughs> Lloyd for an incredible career that she has had. Now playing her last game, played her last game. Uh, she has just been an absolute servant for U.S. soccer and for U.S. soccer fans. We salute everything you have done on and off the pitch. It has been quite incredible and an absolute honor to watch you play. And we cannot really say thank you enough. From all of us here at CBS Sports HQ, thank you to Carly Lloyd. Thank you to everyone for watching in. Boys, we'll see you next week. Everybody else, let's hope Poppy Miller's back with us next time, eh? Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.